Alright, is Toyota still a reliable company? Today I'm going to learn you something about Toyota and I'm going to demonstrate that Toyota is still reliable. A lot of people saying, oh, new Toyota is not reliable. They're not the way they're, they used to be and that's not true. So a lot of people don't have a mechanical background or an engineering background. So the first thing in understanding Toyotas is you got to realize that Toyota doesn't make anything. There's no such thing as a Toyota. And what I mean by that is Toyota is truly a collection of parts. Toyota engines are designed by Yamaha. They're essentially Yamaha engines. This, yes, this Yamaha. And arguably, Yamaha is the uh, best mass-produced engine maker in the world. Toyota's automatic transmissions are made by ASIN. And these are the only automatic transmissions that last forever. Automatic transmissions used to blow up at 100,000 miles, and that was the end of the car. ASIN transmissions are still out here on the road today in early 80s and 90s gen Camrys, and they have uh, nearly a million miles on them. They last forever. Toyota components are made by Denso, and you're never going to find a Toyota that needs an alternator or a starter because Denso alternators and starters and electrical components last forever. Our last Camry at 300,000 miles when we sold it working had a working original OEM Denso alternator and starter. Every Toyota gets a Panasonic battery including Lexuses and they've always used Panasonics as their battery OEM battery supplier and Panasonic is what makes Tesla Tesla in fact, when Tesla wanted to make their uh, electric vehicles and they needed a battery that would last forever, they went to Toyota and said, "What batteries do you use? Do you you guys do you guys use?" And the answer was, of course, Panasonic. Toyota uses Panasonic batteries and electronics. Most Toyota OEM shocks are made by Tokiko, and if you're into aftermarket anything, you know this. Uh, most people slap Tokiko shocks as a upgrade. They come standard on most Toyotas. Some Toyota and Lexus vehicles have adjustable shocks, and they're by KYB. Again, this is known in the aftermarket community as a top-tier shock. This will be on your upper-end Toyota and Lexuses. Matsusicha, it's hard to say, is basically uh, what, Panasonic was pan uh, bef what Panasonic was before they changed to Panasonic. And this uh, brand will be in a lot of your uh, electronic components such as the infotainment set system or the stereo system in your Toyotas. So when we arrive at this new generation of Toyotas, a lot of people say Toyota's changed. But the fact of the matter is, and the truth is, nothing's changed. Because the suppliers that I just mentioned are all within these new Toyotas. In other words, Every brand that I just mentioned of supplier is inside your new generation of new Toyotas. So when people say that this new 2024 Tacoma isn't like the old Toyotas, they simply have no idea what they're talking about. Because objectively speaking, you still have under this hood a Yamaha designed turbocharged four-cylinder engine it is connected in the hybrid variant to a Denso electric motor and it will be connected to a Panasonic battery pack it will have Tokiko shocks or KYBs it will have an ASIN automatic transmission the, 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 supplier, the suppliers are all the same within this Tacoma nothing has changed it's only a perception and mythology that somehow Toyota did something different here. Now, a lot of people will cite the Tundra and go, no, no, you're wrong because Toyota's changed because the engine is uh, having issues spinning bearings. There was a turbo wastegate issue and various other sorted problems. But the fact of the matter is this, uh, we, we live in this new generation of people not trucks, but people who grew up in a point-and-click world and uh, don't really understand that uh, things take time to sort out, especially when you have a new model year, but they're used to this kind of uh, point-and-click instant gratification type of thing. Uh, what I'm trying to ramble there is that they, they grew up in a world with Ask Jeeves, <laughs> and, uh, you know, whatever you want, you just point. 
and click and then instantly the answer or solution comes up and they expect this sort of instant fix internet type of thing to happen within the automotive industry as well when a problem arises in fact problems shouldn't arise at all but the truth is problems do arise your entire life no matter what manufacturer we're talking about you've heard every day on the news or every other day that there's been a recall somewhere from some manufacturer for this that or the other thing it's just part of reality when the tundra came out remember the toyota tundra wastegate problem and when this happened everybody jumped up and screamed and hollered that toyota was no good and they had a wastegate problem their engines were junk how often now do you hear about Toyota Tundra wastegate problems? That's right, they've corrected the problem because it was simply a manufacturing error. It takes time. They can't point and click and go Ash Jeeves, Control Alt Delete the wastegate problem. Give them a few months and now you don't hear about any Toyota Tundra wastegate problems. But instead people cite this, Toyota recalls their Tundra because of some engine issues. Toyota claims that they left trash in the engine and it basically uh, caused it to be destroyed. Machining debris wasn't cleaned and there's some issues and they're recalled right now. And people say, yep, Toyota has lost its way. They're going down. Nope, they're not going down because that twin turbo V6 is a Yamaha design and it's going to last a million miles because that's what they tested it as or tested it too, I should say. Uh, the point is, the engine is not going anywhere. It's just a hiccup, and it's part, again, of the normal manufacturing uh, reality. Now, nobody's denying that there's problems at Toyota. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying Toyota is not having problems. What I'm saying is problems are normal in the assembly process and manufacturing process of vehicles especially a new quote-unquote generation of vehicle their so-called growing pains but again just because one of these people or processes or robots in the case of the tundra engine that uh, the robot left machining trash inside of it those problems take time to be corrected or resolved and they will be corrected and resolved. It doesn't mean that the underlying engineering is flawed in these engines that you see here simply because there was a problem or a few defective ones got through. There's, the problems are statistically irrelevant. The numbers, the math doesn't add up no matter how you want to crunch the numbers. When you crack open a modern Toyota engine, in other words when you just look under the hood or open it up, whatever, you're going to see what Toyota fanboys and fangirls have always seen, which is excellent, excellent engineering without any hint of planned obsolescence whatsoever. And that last part is important because a lot of people somehow think Toyota follows planned obsolescence. They don't. Uh, GM invented planned obsolescence. Toyota and Japanese manufacturers do the opposite of planned obsolescence. This is Toyota's hybrid synergy drive. We have it in our Sienna. It's in all, nearly all Toyota vehicles now. Uh, but you can see here on the front of the engine, there's zero belts. You're not even going to find a rubber belt. They've done away with the wear and tear of rubber belts being exposed out here. There's none at all. You have a uh, crankshaft harmonic balancer down here, but nothing is connected to it. The timing belt is, is uh, under this metal cover, and the water pump will be electronic. There will be a timing chain under here, not a timing belt. There's not going to be any Ford nonsense and Chevy nonsense like an oil-soaked rubber belt or an oil-soaked rubber uh, oil pump belt or any nonsense that's made out of plastic embedded inside of this thing. This is one compact, well-engineered unit by Yamaha. This is new Toyota. This is it right here. There's nothing that indicates that this is poor engineering. Now, if you've got one of these new Toyotas with their hybrid uh, battery packs, you're going to have a Panasonic battery pack. Same old Panasonic that they've always used. 
the same Panasonic that uh, that Tesla uses because they went to Toyota and said, how do you do it? How do you make your batteries last forever? And they said, our supplier is Panasonic, and that's why Tesla used Panasonic. Toyota didn't change. If you got a modern hybrid or any hybridized to Toyota, whether it's a car, a truck, or SUV, it's going to have a Panasonic Stone Cold Reliable Best in the Class Panasonic Hybrid Battery Pack inside. Any type of motor assist on your hybrid unit, whether it's MG1, MG2, or this one's the one that goes in the back of some models to, ride, to uh, drive the rear axle. The point is, these are all going to be Denso electric motors. The same Denso Toyota is always used. The same Denso that makes motors such as starter motors and alternators, which is essentially a motor. They made them forever, and they last forever. Toyotas are the only vehicles there you get it, and you'll have the original starter and alternator after 300,000 miles. Now this is Toyota's 2.4 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine. These are in the Tacomas. These are in the new Land Cruiser 250s. Uh, these are going to be in the new 4Runners. And toy this is this is not some woke Toyota engine that oh Toyota is is doing something different or new. This is still a Yamaha designed engine. I know this one's out of a Lexus because these engines have been out first on the Lexus. So this uh, 2.4 turbo uh, debuted on the Lexus. That's how proud and confident they are of this engine. But that's not my point of this rambling. The point is the supplier didn't change. The point of today's rant is that Toyota didn't change. Everything on this engine used the same exact suppliers that Toyota has used for decades. Here we can see an alternator down here, and that is going to be your Denso alternator. Yamaha-designed engine, and it's going to be connected to an ASIN transmission. Same exact suppliers. Here we see classic, classic signs of Toyota over-engineering. This is called a crankshaft bed plate, and instead of having individual horseshoe-shaped uh, crankshaft main bearing end caps you get this whole big beefy crankshaft bed plate unit and it's over engineering it's meant to stiffen up and strengthen up this turbocharged engine this is what Yamaha does this is what Toyota does they over engineer everything this gear right here on the end of the crankshaft actually runs a balance shaft Toyota's had these on their engines for decades the old 80s Camry's had these <laughs> And they make your four-cylinder nice and smooth, almost like a V8. Again, this the point, and point of me pointing this out is just showing you the attention to refinement detail and that Toyota's not gone backwards or downgraded somehow their engine design. Everything that they've always done is here plus more. Don't worry, I won't bore you with technical stuff, but here again, this is where this gear connects to connects this balance shaft that you see right here and the whole point of all this extra stuff is to just make the ride smoother and more refined for you my point again is Toyota didn't go backwards they didn't cheap out they didn't bean counter this or an accountant got involved and made it cheaper this that or the other not true they still have this thing over engineered and they're throwing everything at it in order to make it up to Toyota's standards of quality, durability, and reliability. There's no planned obsolescence shenanigans in the timing mechanisms. You see you get a chain, you get a nylon tensioner, not some inferior plastic grade, and you get another separate chain just for the oil pump. Okay, this they could have cheaped out on this in so many ways again. Ford and, and the GM designs have oil-soaked rubber belts in the same scenario that wear out, and you already know that that's not as good as this. So it's just, again, we're showing you that nothing's changed here. Now this here is a Toyota exclusive, and this is going to kind of uh, <laughs> establish my point here a little more, and that is, if you read here, the cylinder head gets a polymer cover, that's a fancy way of saying high-grade plastic, but it's high-grade plastic. Don't worry, these things have been around forever. They don't break. But more importantly, 
is you get an oil delivery pipe for the rockers for lubrication. This is Toyota slash Yamaha's over engineering. When you take off most valve covers, that's the topmost part of any engine, you're just going to have the valve cover, maybe a, a, P, a positive crankcase ventilation system up here. Anyway, point is, see this here? See this marked B? Oil delivery pipe. Toyota and Yamaha over engineer their engine so much that they put an oil feed on the back side of the valve cover just to oil the rockers. So this whole this whole rocker or excuse me valve cover actually gets an oil feed. Now in most engines it's just oil splashing up in here, but this has a, a oil delivery pipe with a bunch of holes to spray the very very top of the engine that's good old fashioned old school Toyota they haven't gone backwards all right here we're gonna look at the valve cover of a 5.7 liter V8 that's the old so-called bulletproof V8 that all the Toyota uh, fanboys and girls wish they had back at least some of them that say that that new Toyota is different right they're not as good as the old 5.7 well this is the 5.7 valve cover on one uh, one of the valve covers, excuse me, because it's a V engine. And here you can see what I'm talking about. Instead of just being a plain old valve cover, you actually have oil ports here. And then if you follow the mouse, it's going to branch off to one side and then to the other. And you're going to see little tiny holes here. This is Toyota's over engineering on their last bulletproof, don't make them like they used to engine you can see this pipe goes on this side and it goes on this side and this holes every so often to spray the top of the engine this is classic Toyota over engineering and the point again is that Toyota didn't take this away they didn't go to some new type of Toyota they still have this on their new engines so when we go back to our new four-cylinder 2.4 engine that's in the Tacoma and the 4Runner and the Land Cruiser 250 and people go they don't know they didn't they're woke they're not doing them like they used to you don't know what you're talking about <laughs> because if you had any mechanical inclination you could see right here that Toyota has retained already extraneous over engineered features such as this oil delivery pipe inside of the back of the valve cover for crying out loud and that they've added even more features to that but they didn't go backwards that's my point here underneath each piston is oil squirters to help cool the turbocharged engine this is common but again Toyota didn't take this away or do anything different you still have two underside piston oil squirters two oil nozzles for each uh each one of them they're a double square blah 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 you get my point they're cool on the back side of the piston they didn't take it away this is old school classic toyota stuff the twin turbo excuse me the the turbo four cylinder and the twin turbo has this too but we'll get this in a second but the 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 four-cylinder turbo engine has its own cooling system. So separate from the main cooling system that's on every car, it has an electric coolant pump, basically an electric water pump. So it has two cooling circuits, one for the engine and one for the turbochargers and intercooler. It's got its own separate water pump, radiator, and cooling circuit. That's what we call over-engineering, not woke new Toyota, but good old over-engineering, over-built, well-engineered Toyota. This turbocharger is made by IHI, Japan. It's a Japanese turbocharger. It's the same turbocharger, tur tur turbocharged company sourced by Ferrari. That's right. They use Ferrari turbochargers in your Toyota, still made in Japan. Now, I'm not going to go through all the, this is the twin turbo engine here, uh, that's going to be, that is in the, in the, uh, you know, the, uh, Land Cruiser 300, the GX 550, the LX 600, the LS, uh, 500 and the Toyota Sequoia and the Toyota Tundra. 
This engine, again, has IHI Japanese turbochargers. It's designed by Yamaha. It's over-engineered, blah, blah, blah. It's got a separate cooling system just for the turbos, blah, blah, blah. It's got the oil squirters underneath both valve covers here, blah, blah, blah. It's got all the classic old-school Toyota stuff and more. There's zero evidence that Toyota has done anything different with this new generation of Toyotas. But unfortunately, we live in this generation of Veruca salts. They are impulsive, they are impatient, they are unreasonable, <laughs> and they are illogical. So Toyota's rolling off a new model uh, all at once, or new generation, I should say, of twin turbo engines and V6s, and there's a few problems. And if they don't get fixed right this instant, they go full Veruca Salt, throw a tantrum, and proclaim proudly that Toyota is somehow bankrupting themselves. But as stated earlier, Toyota is simply a collection of parts, suppliers, and excellent engineering. There's no evidence to suggest that Toyota changed their suppliers. When we look at the technical drawings and the published technical details of the engines and transmissions inside of this new, these new generations of Toyotas, and I'm talking about everything from the hybrid synergy drives to the 2.4 liter turbos to the 3.5 twin turbo V6. When we look at all those technical drawings, there's nothing to suggest that there's anything inside of new Toyotas other than over-engineering, classic Toyota over-engineering. So the suppliers have stayed the same and the engineering has improved. But again, this is going to be hard to comprehend unless you're the ty type of Toyota fanboy that's cracked open these Toyotas over the years. Now, I'm not saying you need to have some years of experience or nonsense like that. I'm simply saying, if you're the type of Toyota fanboy or girl that does something more than oil changes on your Toyota, and you've torn apart these things, you realize that what's underneath a Toyota is simply a collection of Yamaha, Asin, and Denso engineering excellence. And we see the same exact excellence in these two or three or four or whatever the heck all of them all these new models and this little comprehension these days of manufacturing processes it's not taught in public schools <laughs> at all so it's not going to be comprehended by most or shall we say many and so the moment toyota had a wastegate issue on their assembly line okay <laughs> Well, they don't anymore, and they probably never will, because Toyota fixed it. See how that works? Ah, uh, yes, but Toyota had a problem with their main bearings on this twin-turbo V6 that I keep hyping up and telling you, don't worry, it's fine, it's A-OK. -okay. But uh-oh, it spun a bearing, surely the engineering is all wrong, and Toyota screwed up. And it's the same thing. It's as Toyota claims, they left trash in here and it screwed it up. And that too shall pass. They'll fix it. And I think this gets blown out of proportion. And again, there's no way to mince words here, so I'm just going to be blunt. If you're the type of person that's afraid of main bearings, in other words, if I say the word spun bearing, or the phrase spun bearing to you and you get scared you're probably not going to like my explanation. There's a couple type of people. If, if you say main bearing or spun bearing and they're not afraid, you know, you got those type of people. And if you go spun bearing, main bearing, and somebody goes, oh my God, that's the end of the world. That sounds so complicated and advanced. You got those people, okay? Now, I'm not trying to be mean here. What I'm saying is this. This is a crankshaft. They've been around for over a hundred years. So have main bearings, and this design is antiquated, <laughs> meaning the internal combustion engine design as a whole. It's a main bearing. Toyota makes gazillions of these. It's not an issue. It's not scary. It's not anything. <laughs> it's a main bearing having an issue. 
And this is, uh, you know, to people who work on cars, it's no big deal. But to Toyota, who has a team of engineers, mechanics, R&D, expertise, blah, 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 and billions to toss around, this is nothing to them. There's a main bearing issue. So what? Get in there and fix it like you did with the wastegate issue, and it's done. It's over with. And that's why Toyota and every car manufacturer will give you what's known as a powertrain warranty. And these have all broken pretty much within warranty. But even if it was outside of warranty, Toyota is still going to make it right. Because Toyota would be committing suicide to do otherwise, and they have nothing to gain by doing that. This should be obvious to most people. But some will still claim that the sky is falling and that Toyota fired all their engineers some years ago and hired a bunch of drunks, drunks outside of the Dollar General store to design their engines and just drive their company into the gutter. This main bearing issue is called reality. It's called a production problem. problem. <laughs> it's called a production problem. It's not an engineering problem, it's a production problem. How do we know? It's a, it's, a, it's a production problem and not an engineering problem because of this right here. This is called a dynamometer or a dyno. Okay, and your twin turbo V6 engine or your, your four-cylinder turbo engine or your hybrid center drive, whatever Toyota engine that we're talking about has sat on a dyno in R&D for years for millions of miles. And the engineers sit around and abuse this thing on a dyno and try to break it. That's their job as engineers, to break it and fix it and break it and fix it and break it and fix it until it doesn't break anymore. And since we already established that Toyota doesn't follow planned obsolescence, we all agree that because that's why Toyota is even a thing. Because when Ford and Chevy and, and everybody was doing planned obsolescence, Americans got sick of that and Toyota saw their opportunity and their whole business model is based on being the opposite of planned obsolescence, making your engine last forever until you get bored of it. <laughs> so they've sat your Toyota engine on a dyno and they've taken it out in the real world. Engines don't fall from the engine tree. Your new Tacoma 4-cylinder 2.4 turbo engine seen here did not fall out of the engine tree. <laughs> it was created by engineers and it was tested. They didn't just make it and then stick it inside of a car and said, we'll let everybody else test it. They've abused it. The thing that they can't test is the manufacturing process in the real world. That is the weak point, and that is where you're seeing all these issues arrive. Excuse me, arise. <laughs> you're seeing the issues arise in the real world production process. So uh, the engineers uh, engineer it right, they test it right, they, they abuse it in the real world, they die it, blah, blah, blah. But then, eventually, real people have to put it together with real robots. And this is where most of the hiccups and problems occur for any manufacturer. And that's what you're seeing. But that's also why you're seeing them get fixed, such as the Toyota Tundra wastegate issue, wastegate actuator issue, uh, to be technical. It's not happening anymore because they told these people, hey, you got a problem, fix it. And they said, okay, we got it. And that was the end of the problem. Now, many will scream that Toyota doesn't have an official fix for the twin turbo V6 recall in the Tundra right now and the LX600. In other words, those spun main bearings that I showed you, there's no official, official fix from Toyota. Toyota's official answer is Toyota is currently developing the remedy. Now, here's what you need to do and think. It, it doesn't say Toyota is not going to take care of you or Toyota doesn't know nothing. <laughs> it says Toyota is currently developing the remedy. Okay? It takes some time. 
you will be notified by late July of this year. It's not late July yet. The Ask Jeeves Veruca Salt generation doesn't understand. <laughs> it doesn't understand the words that I just highlighted from Toyota. When you go on Ask Jeeves, you get your answer and your fix right now. You hit the you hit the magnifying glass button and you get what you want. You just put it in the search window and then you get what you want. But that's not the way it works with auto manufacturing problems. It's going to take Toyota a little bit of time. Don't care how I want it now. But you're not going to get it now. You're going to be a big boy or big girl and you're going to wait for Toyota and Toyota's team of engineers and people within their organization to fix the problem. It's just the way it is. It's just reality. <laughs> there are hiccups. There are problems. Like the wastegate issue, it happens, it's done, it's over with. You already know a new generation of any model, blah, 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 when they change it is going to have some hiccups. As I mentioned earlier, most of these hiccups are in the production process because they haven't been sorted out. Because that is the weak point in this whole manufacturing game of new cars or cars in general okay the weak point again is in the production so the first year model second year you're going to have issues within the production because they gotta work out the bugs and the kinks and this that and the other but the point of today's video is toyota hasn't changed no matter what Toyota you're getting, you got a Yamaha designed engine like always. It's an open secret. Toyota decides over the years whether they want to be uh, proud of that and, and, and really uh, publicize that or they want to be kind of, uh, you, know, uh, you know, shady with it, you know, kind of subtle with it is what I'm trying to ramble. And they'll say, well, Yamaha helped us out or Yamaha designed the head or the top or the bottom or the Yamaha is who designs these engines they last forever your new toyota still has a yamaha your new toyota still has an asin automatic or manual transmission i don't care what you or anybody says asin transmissions their automatics are the only automatic transmission that lasts forever they're still out here on the road in southern california with nearly a million miles never had the transmission oil change and they still work and while we're on the subject of ASIN transmissions do you realize that domestic manufacturers have to put these ASINs they have to beg Toyota to give up uh, their ASIN transmissions so they can stick them in their uh, domestic cars so they can get their transmissions to work Look at this for a second. The ASIN transmissions are so good. Toyota supplier is so good that they, look at this. They had, to, they had to beg to be put in the Jeeps. Jeep, Dodge, Ram, Nissan's got them. Hyundai, Hyundai, however you say it, has got them. Uh, there are the Zusus, Mitsubishi's, Volvo and Saab had to beg. Pontiac had them. Ford, Chevy. Look at this. Volkswagens even had them for a while. What's this what we got down here? Fiat had to beg for one. Okay, the, the, the list goes on here. They're all begging for some of that Toyota ASIN transmission action. But guess what? ASIN and Toyota have a good deal. They have a sweetheart deal going where the best ASIN transmissions are going to be exclusive to Toyota and Lexus vehicles. Not saying ace and transmissions going in those other vehicles aren't good. I'm just saying that as far as the best of the best, they're exclusive to Toyotas only. And ASIN is a Toyota group. They're basically Toyota. They play around with who owns what at a company, but ace and Toyota, they they gotta put Toyota automatic transmissions in all those cars to make them work. Think about that. Your new woke Toyota is still getting Denso parts through and through. 
anything that looks or resembles like a motor or electrical component is going to be a Denso. Denso's are the best. They last forever. Look at that. They even got a little race car down here. Denso. 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 You even find Denso's and other, again, domestic and European cars as well. Your new Toyota is still a Toyota. It's still got Denso all up in it. Your hybrid battery is still going to be the world's best battery maker. In your new Toyota, it's going to be Panasonic. As mentioned, they didn't go backwards. They didn't pick a new supplier. All these trucks now, uh, the, 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 uh, the new Land Cruiser is, going to, is hybridized. The uh, Tacoma is hybridized. The Tundra is hybridized. They're all hybridized. And then, of course, this hybrid Synergy Drive is hybridized. They're all Panasonic's. Okay, it, di di it didn't change. You ever wonder why you don't see Torsen on many vehicles anymore except for Toyotas? You got it. Toyota owns Torsen. <laughs> Toyota, through their JTEC subsi subsidiary, bought Torsen a while back, some years ago. And so you can get Torsen limited slip differentials in other vehicles, but they have to license it through Toyota. Toyota owns Torsen. Your new Land Cruiser 250, Land Cruiser 300, GX 550 Lexus, Lexus LX 600, even the Lexus LS 500 sedan, they all have a Torsen Type C limited slip differential. Some models of Toyotas and Lexuses have tor Torsen rear differentials. The point is, if you want the world's best limited slip differential, it belongs to Toyota. New Toyota, new woke Toyota, that's not the same Toyota anymore, still owns and uses Torsen. So the point of today's rambling is simple. What some people see as this new woke Toyota here, it's new, it's different, it's not the same as it used to be. It's not that old school Toyota. You have absolutely, positively no mechanical, scientific, engineering, or logical basis for that rogue, misguided, uneducated assertion. This new Toyota is the same good old-fashioned Toyota whether you realize it or not because the parts inside of this are exactly the same as I keep repeating. I know I'm repeating, but it needs to be driven in. There's nothing new or different inside of this. It's only perceived as new and different because people don't understand what makes a Toyota a Toyota. The parts. There's no such thing as a Toyota engine. There's no such thing as a Toyota transmission. There's no such thing as a Toyota battery or a Toyota alternator or a Toyota starter or a Toyota hybrid synergy drive or a Toyota electric motor. The list goes on. There's no such thing as a Toyota shocks, etc., etc., blah, 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 blah. So chill out, calm down, and most of all, educate yourself <laughs> on reality, at least the history of Toyota, and we don't need to go back into ancient times or the 50s or whatever, but for crying out loud, it's the same old Toyota, and you're not going to get any sort of production issues in a first generation new model fixed at the pace of Ask Jeeves.